Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. A very, 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 very fun video to do today as I try and scrape the bottom of the barrel uh, for content during the international break. It's always tough, it's always hard, but we're going to get there somehow and I'm going to use this sort of two weeks to talk about more than just Celtic on this channel. I'm going to have a look around the league as much as I possibly can. On that note, yesterday's video, <laughs> the comment section was feisty, wasn't it? A lot of people not happy about my opinions on that red card, but uh, hey oh, let's move on with it. Today we're here to go through every single player at Celtic so far this season and give them a score from 1 to 10 on how I think they've performed. It's sort of like a, a report card, you know. Um, I am the teacher. I'm giving it out to the teacher's parents. Um, Mrs. Jota, be ready. Don't know why I picked Jota in particular there, but yeah, here we go. <laughs> Now, this video could be one of those ones that take all day if I don't just kind of go through it as quickly as possible. I want to have it done and dusted with no longer than 15 minutes spent on it. So let's try and do it. We're going to look at the entire Celtic squad who have made over four appearances this season. That's the sort of cut-off that I'm giving it. So James Forrest won't be involved, for example, because he's only played twice. We're going from four appearances onwards, and we're going to start at the players who have made the least amount of appearances so far for Celtic. Um... This is one of those subjective videos where no one is going to agree completely with me. I doubt that anybody watching this video, out of the thousands of you, will agree that uh, I am spot on with this. People will have completely different opinions on different players, and that is fine. So please remember that before you start taking to your tirades in the comments section. It is my opinion from what I have seen. I may be wrong, I might be a mile off, and if that's the case, that's the case. But we can go about it in a respectful manner, right? Keep in mind, this is parents' evening. I'm getting very much into this whole parents' evening thing, ain't I? Should probably gear that up. And before we go any further with the video, uh, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Free content every day that we possibly can on the channel. Just by pressing that big red subscribe button and the bell beside it, you're always notified. You're always up to date with my content. So please make sure to hit that on the road to hopefully 40k. That's the next big one, isn't it? 40,000 subs. Let's get there as quickly as possible. Right then, at the bottom, it's near beat on that we are starting with a player who I think we all have a particularly set opinion on, someone whose time at Celtic has sort of dragged on to a point where I don't think we expected him to be here or even involved in the Celtic squad, but he's still being called to action. He was involved at the weekend, of course. He played in that central midfield role for the first time in a long time. Uh, after being a centre-back for the last few years. I actually didn't mind him as much, but I'm going to go ahead and give him a 3 out of 10 so far this season. Let's not forget the red card against Michelin. That is going to be, I think, the overwhelming uh, decision-maker for me. That alone shows that Nier Beton is still rash, still a, a kind of liability at Celtic. I'm not a big fan. And yeah, he performed okay at the weekend, but outside of that, he has been a bit sort of rash, a bit annoying. 3 out of 10 might seem harsh, but he's someone who I just can't wrap my head, head around how he's still here. We've had to cling on to him for depth, um, and that's you've got to put that, put that blame in the board that we're in that situation, but so annoying. I, I'm giving him a 3 out of 10. Greg Taylor, he's been injured for the last little while. He was out with that shoulder injury. Someone who started the season sort of up and down. A couple of games I thought he looked decent in. Um, a couple of games I thought he looked hopeless in, and really has stressed the fact that we need another left back because he's our best left back at the club um, and that is embarrassing to say. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him a 5 out of 10. That might be actually very generous and people might be like, what, when they see some of the other ratings in here? But I feel like he's been fine when he's played, bang average. Um, he's not been overly bad. He's not been overly good. So I think slap bang in the middle is fair for Greg Taylor. His rating was probably one of the hardest to give because we've not seen him for quite a while now. It's been a few games since we last seen him. So I think that when I come back at the halfway point of the season and review this, then maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll be going down a bit. We'll just have to wait and see. Another 5 out of 10, uh, Stephen Welsh. I'm going to give him that rating. Someone who's kind of fell out of favour with the centre-back pair, pairing sorry, of Cameron Carter-Vickers and Carol Starfelt. He's not really had a look in the last few games. But when he has played, once again, he's been fine. He's been bang average. He's a give-or-take player for me. Someone who I have banged on about for the last year of being, you know, 
someone who's not good enough for Celtic, but he has got better. There's no denying that. I think he has improved as a footballer, as a defender, but I still don't have complete trust or faith in him. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give him a 5 out of 10 too. Someone else who, just like Taylor, we haven't seen an awful lot recently, so a bit harder to gauge. Um, Livingston was the last performance like the last time I remember seeing can't remember if he played against Rafe Rovers now but uh against Livingston you know one of those performances again can give or take with Stephen Welsh my lowest rating in the entire report card uh James McCarthy I'm giving a two out of ten people will be crying already saying it's overly harsh because I know McCarthy will have a kind of fan base of, of people who want to see him do well because he's a Celtic supporter and, and an Irish international and all the rest of it and don't get me wrong I want James McCarthy to succeed as of right now though he has been utterly hopeless at Celtic he's not up to speed he's not ready he doesn't look fit I, I, I find it hard to give him a rating higher than this and right now I, I think you could argue he's been the worst looking player so far and that's why I've got him at 2 out of 10. Um, it's just every time he's been on he's just looked like he's been thrown in as a professional footballer for the first time. He's looked so off the pace. Um, he can't keep up and he slows everything down. I feel like he's looked clunky on the ball. When he was hooked against Livingston that he couldn't pass the ball 5 yards for fuck's sake. So I, I need to give him the lowest rating in the squad at the moment I'm hoping that we see a drastic improvement from someone we know is a quality footballer we've seen that at the highest of levels for James McCarthy but we've not seen it yet at Celtic um, and he's someone who at the end of the day probably shouldn't have been at Celtic a signing that was made by Dermot Desmond not by the manager the manager I think the rumours were didn't even want him so it's not been a great start for life at Celtic for, for James McCarthy. Dishing out my third 5 out of 10 already and I'm giving it to Josip Juranovic, uh, someone who once again is injured after only seeing him a few times. I think he's made about 5 or 6 appearances now, the first one being against Rangers at Ibrox. Um, someone who I think against Livingston was utterly hopeless too, couldn't pass a ball 5 yards, but in other performances has looked okay to me. He's got a goal as well of course, his penalty that he scored against Real Betis. Um, I think he's someone who's going to be great on that right hand side when he gets into his groove and he's back fit and he's playing there constantly rather than being switched to the, the left hand side where he doesn't want to play I'm going to go ahead and give him 5 out of 10 right now because I feel like it has been once again sort of bang average in the middle Kyogo Furahashi eh? we're leaving the best to last usually in these videos but no we're, we're getting the best out of the way quite early 9 out of 10 I'm giving Kyogo oh my god how you know giving him a fucking 10 because he's not perfect he's not the best fucking well he is the best thing ever isn't he he's just amazing but I mean 10 out of 10 would suggest nothing's wrong being amazing from day 1 he ha really has been amazing Ryan why are you saying he's no look listen he's not a 10 out of 10 no one is a 10 out of 10 in the, in the premiership at the moment no one's playing like a 10 out of 10 um, and that because Kyogo Furuhashi, he could have been a 10 out of 10 for me if he didn't get injured and he was there to play those other couple of games because he could have had about 15 goals by now um, and also if he just knew how to finish his dinner more often man there's so many sitters that he's missed so far which is the reason I've gave him a 9 because if he's converted them Christ he could be playing for Liverpool honestly he's just amazing his runs, his pace, his, his movement, everything just terrific you can tell Rangers fans are going to love me saying he could play for Liverpool but um I think he's been an outstanding 9 out of 10 for Kyogo. It will be a 10 out of 10 if he keeps going the way he's going, but he just needs to be able to finish with a bit more conviction. Um, you know, if he had those chances that he'd missed, oh, he'd be off the scales, really. There is no chance we're getting us finished in 15 minutes. I've just realised that. No no chance. <laughs> Jota, I'm giving an 8 out of 10. Very, very high rating for someone who has only just came into the club, of course. He came on and came in on deadline day. He's not played too many games, but he has played more, or I think the same as Kyogo. So I think it's fair to give him an 8 um, because he's been brilliant. I think he's been the second best player behind Kyogo in the team. He's been a real good addition on that left-hand side. He's played well on the right-hand side when we've needed him to as well. Um, bagged a couple of goals now and uh, a gorgeous man 8 out of 10 I think he's been really entertaining uh, and he's someone that when this front three are, are fully fit and flowing together could shine the brightest out of them all someone we need to already I think pay the money for Cameron Carter Vickers 6 out of 10 I think he's probably been the most comfortable out of the centre halves we've seen this season which is uh, a shame to say because I don't think he's been overly comfortable I think he's been good at points but there's still sometimes I'm like mm, there's a disaster coming with you boy you can sense it but he's he's been the best out of all the centre halves I think 6 out of 10 is a fair assessment on him he's not been exceptional because at the end of the day defensively we've still been very very poor but I don't think he's been a, as bad as what we've seen some other centre 
half speed at times. So I'm going to go for 6 out of 10 for Cameron Carter-Vickers. As Myla Soro, I'm giving a 3 out of 10. Just a bit better than James McCarthy. He's been shocking this season. Um, I think in most of his appearances. Erratic, rash discombobulated if you like love that word but he's just been a bit all over the place yellow card central um and he's not living up to the the, the early promise that i think we all seen in ismail asoro I, I just feel like he needs a certain calmness in his game and he, he can he shows glimpses of being a good player the way he breaks up play and such but he's just been so rash and things and it, it, it's annoying three out of ten adam montgomery i'm gonna give a four out of ten which it seems a little harsh but as of recent, he's been very, very... Oh, fly, get off me. As of late, he's been very poor. Uh, and that's brought the rating down. I think I would have given him a 5 or a 6 before the last few games, but he's been really poor. And it's a shame because he's 19. He's clearly not ready to play at this level consistently, um, especially European games. Um, and he's not even... He wasn't even brought up to be a left-back. So I do feel a tad harsh, but it's just the way it is, Adam. Sorry. A Yeti, I'm also going to give a 4 out of 10. Um, someone who... Came on to a little bit of form against Ross County and then against Real Betis as well. And at that point, I'd have maybe had him at a 6 or a 7. But ever since, until Kyogo came back, really offered nothing. Um, it was far too lazy, it seemed. It just didn't get involved. It was really static. And that, for me, has brought him down a little bit. Um, he's someone who I still want to hold out for, but it's getting to the point where we are going to have to be impatient with him because ultimately it's £5 million and it's now coming up a year and a half since he signed for the club. I'm going to have to just give him a 4 out of 10 for now. Callum McGregor, Captain Cal, the, the man with the new contract, 8 out of 10, I'm giving Callum McGregor. Someone who, yeah, I think could, I could bump up to a 9 as well if he just... I don't know, I feel like there's just a little bit more Callum can give and I think he's maybe being held back by the midfield. Uh, by the two players who played ahead of him for the majority of his games so far, Rogic and Turnbull. I think that if you, you had a, a fit, say McCarthy in there, or a, a good sorrow, or just a better signing, playing alongside McGregor with a, with a sort of Turnbull ahead of him, he could have been a 9 or a 10 out of 10, McGregor, because he's been one of our best players so far. But I feel like he's had to come down a couple of marks because of how poor we've been in the midfield at times um which is annoying but 8 out of 10 is still very generous i think he's had a cracking season he's fitted into that captain's armband very very well not physically of course i mean it's a sort of uh, the traits you know he's done very very well um I, I, he's kind of took over from scott brown seem, uh, seamlessly is that the word yeah it is isn't it? and i just love him just absolutely adore him captain cal 8 out of 10 tony ralston's rating is a weird one i'm going to give him 6 out of 10 which actually seems very generous because he's mints. <laughs> like, he is he is not good enough to be Celtic starting right back. He's not good enough to be in the Celtic team. There's a long, long way to go. But he's done quite well at a lot of points this season. Uh, he's contributed to two or three goals as well. Um, and he's knocked his pan in at times. But ultimately, you know, that only carries you so far. Six is the absolute highest I could go with Ralston, even if he scored five or six goals, because he still has been caught out numerous times. He still has that sort of rawness that I feel hasn't been developed from four or five years ago. Um, and he's still a player who's ultimately going to be questioned all the time because, you know, he's not really Celtic quality. He's a guy that wasn't quality enough for Dundee United or St. Johnson, so why suddenly is he Celtic quality? The reason I'm giving him six is mostly for those early season performances when people were crying out for him to be in the Scotland team and that we didn't need a right-back. That was very naive at the time from a lot of people, um, but he did perform well. I won't take that away from him, so I'm going to give him a six out of ten for now. I don't I think that can go much higher this season, though, unless he, you know, has a drastic turn in, in quality. Not form, quality. We got Abada, he's in the wing. I'm giving him a 7 out of 10. 7. Oof. I, can, I, f I feel this is going to be a controversial one. You've gave Jota an 8, you've gave Kyogo a 9, but you're giving Abada a 7. Still a good rating. I think 7's still very good. I think there's, you know, we've seen this. There's not a lot of people touching that just now. I think that Jota, since arriving, has, I don't know, maybe I give Abada an 8. Nah, I'm harsh. Giving a bad an eight. Giving a bad an eight. He's been brilliant so far. His goal contribution has been fantastic. Um, the only reason I wanted to put him down to a seven is because I feel like there's been a few games, Livingston being the one that sticks out in my head, where he's been completely null and void. He's just not been there. 
is is, is like having a, a a sort of ghost in the park. There's been nothing happening with him. He's had a couple of games like that, but I feel like his goals and assists kind of overshadow that in the moment and what he's done in those moments. So I'm going to bump him up to an eight. You know, there you go, Liel. What a, what a wee player. 19 as well. Yeah, 8 out of 10. He's 19, man. He's doing this. Brilliant. Uh, Joe Hart, 8 out of 10 as well. Um, saved us quite a bit this season, more than you'd think. Um, because I feel like if he wasn't in goals, it'd be a lot more with the conceded from, from poor defending, from moments of stupidity. Hart has been a real good signing. He's settled into the squad fantastically. And... It all comes from a guy who I doubted 100%. You, you, you all knew my reaction. You all knew my opinion. I did not want Joe Hart anywhere near Celtic. I hate myself for thinking that now because he's he's been brilliant. He's a leader. Um, It seems like he's got on really well with the squad. And yeah, he, he's made save after save so far. I feel like there's a, the, the reason he's probably not higher than 8 out of 10 is his distribution is still utter wank. Like, oh my God, he kind of kicked the ball. It's, like, it's unbelievable. Every time he kicks the ball at the park, he's out for a throw-in or it's is way off the player he's aiming for that's the only negative about his game but if he's making saves that keeps me happy so 8 out of 10 it's mad to think that the player who's made the third most appearances so far is Carl Starfield he's been such an up and down player I'm giving him a 5 out of 10 um, Starfield is such a frustrating one so far he shows moments of and I've said this time after time after time in match reviews and match previews he shows moments where he looks great and then he shows moments where he looks so nervous, dodgy, bomb scarish, if you like. I like him and I think he's just got to get better but a lot of people have still got so many harsh reservations on him from his first couple of games where he, he did look hopeless. He's came on so much more of a game since then I think. Look, he's not perfect, that's why I'm giving him a 5 out of 10. Ultimately, that's, that's still a bang average rating but... You know, after his first couple of games, it could have been a 2 or a 3 out of 10. He has came on a little bit, um, and I think a lot of people have to trust in him a bit more. But he does make that hard. That's the issue. It does. It makes that a bit difficult. 5 out of 10, I feel like it's fair. And I'm going to wrap up the final two players in one, and I'm giving them both a 4 out of 10. It's the players who have made the joint most appearances thus far for Celtic. It's David Turnbull and Tom Rogic. 4 out of 10, a lot of people were saying that's very, very harsh. I was actually going to bump Rogic up to a 5 out of 10 and leave uh, Turnbull at 4 for one reason. The expectation on T David Turnbull this season of what we were expecting to see of him and all the rest of it was huge and I feel like he has let us down. He's had a couple of really good performances, crack and assist at the weekend as well against Aberdeen, but on the whole, he's been so disappointing this season, I think. Um, he's not been the player that we know he can be. And a lot of people are losing patience with him. I've seen it firsthand at games. People are not happy with David Turnbull at the moment. Tom Rogic as well, you know, started the season brilliantly. Um, looked like a real revitalised player. But as of late, he's looked sort of sluggish. Good impact sub at the weekend, again against Aberdeen. But the few weeks before that, both of them looked incredibly lazy. They weren't willing to move. They both couldn't work together on the same team. Their decision making was woeful and I think a 4 out of 10 is fair because they're both letting the team down. It's nothing to do with, with, with form, it's just these are two players who are so much better than what they're showing us and that's why I'm giving them a 4 out of 10 and, and people might disagree and people might think it's harsh but I really just can't justify giving them much higher at the moment. The Aberdeen game is a massive turning point for the two of them if they can now turn it on post international break and hopefully they do but you know, that's, it's going to be significant to determining where they stand as Celtic players, I think, because both of them are playing like players who could be replaced. That's the reality right now, I think. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. And that does it. That's today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to give your player ratings to this point in the season so far. Almost a quarter of the way through the league campaign. But an international break coming up. I thought I'd get something out that was at least Celtic related. Uh, make sure to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.